All right, have you always wondered what is the key difference between all the BPMN gateways out there? The either or, the parallel, the event based, the complex, the inclusive or? Perfect, you're here with this whiteboard today. I'm gonna explain the difference between all these gateways. And in the end of this video, you will leave with an understanding what the key differences are and how to use these gateways. So let's start right away. I just modeled a very simple process or a couple of process steps so let's assume our process here, the first activity is to enter some data, uh, whatever that is. Let's, let's assume we are in an HR context. So we enter the data, then we have, an, have a gateway where a decision is made, and then we have follow-up activities. So let's say the either or gateway. So how does this look like? Actually, you could model it like this, just like this route here, or you could also put an X in the middle, then this is the either or. So what does this mean? So we're entering some data and then here on this either or gateway, we can model a decision. So let's say when we enter the data, we enter something for like, let's say there's a variable like maybe seniority, right? Seniority. And there's maybe junior, mid and senior. Okay. So there's a an J, an M or an S. That's the variable. And now we are asking here at this, either or gateway, let's say seniority, so seniority equals junior question mark. So that's the question right now. Is the seniority we have entered here junior? If yes, we go this road on top. If else, so no, so it is medium or senior, we go down here, okay? So in this either or, we have modeled this decision. So let's get a token. So the process starts, the process token moves on to enter the data. We enter the data with the seniorities either J, M or S. And then the token, based on this, we have the decision, what is it now? Is it S or is it not the seniority? Excuse me, is it J or not? And if it is, we go up here and we do not go down here. So up here it would say contact HR and if no, we contact the manager, right? So instantly based on the data here, entered here, this either or gateway is routing us which way and only one way is possible. All right, that's the either or. Now let's have a look on the parallel gateway. How does this look like? As you know, the parallel gateway looks a bit different. There's not an X in here, there is a plus symbol in here. So let's model it like this. There's a plus. Actually, you could make it a bit more good looking like this. So this is a plus. So what happens now is here we could say like this. So we enter the token. So now, of course, if you have in parallel, this question, like the condition, is it a seniority junior or not, doesn't make any sense anymore. So we can remove it. Because what happens now is, as soon as we enter the data, here this token gets here. And now the magic of the parallel gateway is, it duplicates the token coming in. So instead of just having one token, we now have two tokens created by the process. And one token will go up here, and while one will go down here to this activity. And now we have two tokens in the process. And this is always tricky because if you use a parallel gateway, you always have to be able to manage these two tokens afterwards. So what you're gonna do with them? What I recommend, let's say for now in this example, we, we, we use a closing parallel gateway. So we could say, suck like this, then we have here a closing parallel gateway, so to speak. And what happens now is, as soon as one activity is done, this token moves in here and only when the second, which was created here, also arrives there, then we can move on with the process. But the process will, this token here, the green one, this token, will be stuck here until the purple one, the rosé one up there, also joins back. And only if all the tokens created by this here Jump back here, the process moves on. Okay, that was the parallel. Now let's have a look on the inclusive or gateway. How does this look like? So, 
just quickly erasing this stuff right here and also right there we don't need that for the moment you know the inclusive or has this o shape so it looks like an o inside of it and what does this mean now so this actually means we enter some data let's say the seniority field is not just one you could have multiple seniorities you could be junior and medium you could be uh, medium and the senior like there's a combination possible and what you could do now is for example you ask is the seniority equals junior here and if it's junior and medium you would go here for example so let me explain this one this is very tricky so let's say we enter junior and medium and then like this token here we enter then we go to the inclusive or as we have entered junior and medium what does this mean so which is evaluating to true now actually both are evaluating to true so we have junior and medium and this one here is asking okay if it's junior like if it's junior is in it great we go this route and here we have modeled junior and medium so if it's both we go this route so in this case both is evaluated to true hence we also have again two tokens one going here and one going there that's very tricky to understand because in the inclusive or multiple things can be true at the same time that's a difference to the either or right in the either or you just have one one or the other that's it with the inclusive or you could have both technically but also you could have just one huh? let's assume for the moment we enter the seniority is senior right we have said seniority is senior what happens actually nothing happens the token gets stuck here because we have no condition no else statement or anything model in this moment so if the seniority is senior so that's this s right there we have nothing modeled for this so nothing happens all right and if it's m so medium or like uh, the seniority is medium what happens exactly we go down because here m was part of it i hope this makes sense this concept is quite hard to grasp but I think we get used to it. Okay, so after the parallel, the either or and the inclusive or, let's have a look now on the complex gateway. Also, this exists. The complex gateway. So let's say there is this gateway. It looks something like this, it has a couple of lines, like a star. And of course, now multiple instances can come in, right? And let's assume it looks like this so three paths coming in two paths going out and what does this actually mean or could mean let's say for example you send out an, uh, that you're interested in a supply by suppliers like to multiple like you have, let's say you have three suppliers you contact them hey i want an offer and um, each of these lines could represent that there is an offer coming in from a supplier but there here you could now specify a rule on the complex gate well let's say the rule is as soon as I got two offers, I move on, right? So as soon as two, I move on. So it could be like the first supplier is uh, calling you, then this token is still stuck here. And as soon as a second one comes, let's say this one down here is coming, then you move on with the process. Hence, if anyone else would call this one here, like if this third supplier, right? It's this line right there. If the surplus supply is coming to you, after you moved on, it doesn't matter to you anymore. Like it's gone, the thing is gone. Huh? So with a complex gateway, you can specify these kind of rules. Uh, for example, multiple could call you, you just wait until two of them come, came in and then you move on. Okay, that's the complex gateway. And now last but not least, let's have a look on the embed-based gateway. So this is how the event-based gateway could look like. And as you can see, besides the sign that is different, also what happens next is different. Like after the event-based gateway, you need to have events right here in form of a circle. With the other gateways, you, you could have uh, activities, things to do. And the event-based gateway right there is, so let's say something happens, then we are at the event-based gateway. We actually wait for an event to occur. So it's not like the other gateways that you instantly do something, you wait for the time being. And based on the events you have made here clear, you're going to wait. 
So let's say one of these events is a timeout event. So it's a, like a clock, a time. So let's say if 10 seconds pass, you move on. And the other one here is a signal event. So if a signal is coming to you, this could be an API call from somewhere else. And that's actually the thing, right? So you have the token here. You're going to wait until one of these occur. Let's say 10 seconds pass. Hence, you will go this route and this here is dead. So if the signal is coming after the token moved on, uh, things uh, thing is over, right? The system is not going to react on this one. But uh, if the signal is coming right before the 10 seconds pass, what's going to happen? Exactly. The token will move on to the signal and from here you can move on with the process. And that's the event-based gateway.